Welcome! Today I'm happy. I passed 1000 subscribers. More on that later on. The today's topics are Wide Awake still abuses his camera. We will have a quick look at some uh, of uh, Wide Awake's latest video and admire his skills with the camera. Next up is the Flat Earther and Space Denier Brandon Toy. We will have a look at the short parts of the debate with Fly to Flat Earth, where Brandon thinks he can prove that the moon landings is a hoax. And after that I will talk about the fact that I reached a goal for this channel. 1000 subs and I will talk a bit more about what I'm planning in the future. And in the end of this video I will talk a little bit about the Arctic Scholarship. Okay, let's roll and have a look at the first video. First up, Wide Awake. He is a YouTuber based in Florida, USA. I made some videos about him earlier on. He's using a Nikon P1000 and makes videos where he claims that he sees too far. And the other YouTubers uses his videos as evidence. For example, Taboo Conspiracy. Okay, let's have a look at the parts from two of his latest videos. Okay, this footage was taken uh, October 10th, 2018. I was up on top of the observation deck at Pine Island. These islands right here that I'm looking at are 4.84 miles from my location from Pine Island now on top of the observation deck. It was a fairly low low tide. Um, it wasn't an extreme low like I've seen it out there before, but it was a pretty low tide. And uh, when I first got there, you know, it was uh, it was uh, like I said, early in the morning. It was a little on the cold side, um, and I no started noticing some things. And I'm gonna let uh, the natural audio here a little piece of it play. Okay, I'm well aware that Nikon. P1000 is not a professional camera. It's a quite decent consumer camera and it has its limitations. But one thing is for sure, you can get much better results than this. Regardless what camera you use, it's very hard to get it steady when you're zooming in this much. When I work on, for instance, uh, professional television productions, we are using crazy expensive tripods and still it's hard for us to make this kind of shots and have it steady. A small movement in your tripod or camera makes a big difference in the motive you're filming. How much it will move in different distances is quite easy to calculate. So if you try to film like this, don't touch the camera, don't touch the tripod. When I'm taking photos in long distances, I always use a remote control. I make the adjustments on the camera and when I take the picture, I don't touch the tripod, I don't touch the camera. Okay, this time lapse was taken just below the observation deck, uh, but still up on the beach part, up on the seawall. Um, but as you can see, it was still a little windy where I was at. The wind was coming out of the east, which I was kind of exposed to the full wind. 
Um, Wide awake, that's better. But you don't see a problem with this image? Is the trees standing in the water? Hmm, very strange. And then I decided to go a little bit deeper, but um, this was about 30 something minutes um, where I kind of like tried to set on these, uh, set in the same spot. But, you know, what do you see? Um, you know, this is a good point on this. Uh, you know, you can watch uh, how the backdrop changes, how the bushes change, how they actually get smaller. Um, due to uh, the, the visibility change and you'll see this change uh, you know quite prevalent in this um, and you know I always say I want to let the viewer decide for themselves now you can watch the, the guys in the boat um, you'll see some of them get up and walk up on the bank and you'd have to say you know, from the first part of the video, being up on the deck and seeing that same boat. Now, that was the same boat when I was on top of the deck. Um, and I do believe the time lapse was a 25-minute time lapse. Um, I went actually even lower. And in the video here, you will actually see where my camera is located. Now, you'd almost have to think that I got a ladder and went way up on the top of the observation deck and got, you know, higher up to see across the curve. And there he lost it once again. But it's still a great video because it's several things that proves that we can't live on a flat earth. So thank you wide awake, you managed to do it once again proven the globe. Okay, I will explain what I meant with that. Uh, hold on. Are the trees still standing in the water? Very strange. Okay, then have a look on this part of the video. Look at the boat in the background. I will freeze the frame here. The, the bottom of the boat is missing. Why is that? And then this part of the video. Look at the man. He's walking on the water. Is it Jesus? Now I understand why Taboo Conspiracy likes your videos. Okay, that was all of this fool. Let's move on to the next topic. Some days ago, FTFE had a debate with Brandon Toy. Uh, I will have a look at the short part of that debate. There we go. My bad. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> um, right. So, yeah. Is, have you got any particular evidence uh, or, at all? Like any uh, any videos or anything that you think this this is evidence that they've, they've, they've faked something? Because you, know, you said, you know, you don't trust something of it. It could be suspicious you know what to you is is suspicious about anything that nasa have done well that's a good question and i'll show you one of them that i think is the most suspicious of all okay. and let me share my screen with you right now and i'm sure you've seen this before but uh it's one of my favorite pieces of footage because it just it it, it looks like a cheesy 70s movie so let me share here and uh there we go that should be good let me know if you see my screen now. Yep. Okay, good. So I'm sure you're familiar with this piece of footage. Oh, yeah. But this yeah, is awesome. the lunar takeoff from Apollo 17. Yeah. Um, and let me just hit play for a second. We'll watch it together. And uh, I'm sure it'll become clear to you why I think this points to fakery. Let me hit play. There's the uh, lunar lander sitting on supposedly the moon with the background and there it goes with a spark of color and 
lifts off into the sky. Yep. Pretty amazing, I would say. And when I look at that, I go, wow, was that shot for some, uh, you know, 70s movie, like I said? Or no, are they it, really it, expecting us to believe this is real? I mean, it just looks so fake. Can you at least agree that it looks like something from a cheesy movie? Is Brandon really this stupid? He said that it looked like a 70s TV show. Wonder why? Because this was live broadcast from the moon to the earth with a broadcasting camera. The same type of camera they used in the 70s TV shows. Other pictures and so on from the moon was taken with Hasselblad cameras with film and had much better quality. But how could they have better broadcast quality from the moon than we had on earth? Brandon, look at the 70s TV show and you will have the explanation about the quality of this film. Okay, that was a very short one. Let's move on to the next topic. Today I achieved a goal for this channel. I have passed 1000 subscribers. I want to be give a big thanks to other uh, creators, YouTubers who uh, have uh, talked about me on their channels and sent some subs to me. Thank you very much and I want to thanks all of you that follows my channel supporting me with the PayPal, uh, supporting the projects and so on. I'm so glad that you want to see my material. And what are my plans for the channel? First of all, I will start publish a members only material for channel members and for uh, patrons it will be more educational uh, videos uh, i'm already working on that material for my ordinary business but i will make special editions for my members and patrons and it will be based around uh, filming taking photos and so on so my normal material like the banks and so on will be free for all to see and I will make shorter variants for all to see uh, also of these uh, educational uh, videos. And I will have more structure in uh, publishing videos. I will publish Monday, Wednesday and Friday from now on. One of them will be a live broadcast, uh, so in I think about a month's time I will start make one live show a week. And then I have my b two big projects. The Compass project that I uh, presented in yesterday's video, how it's going with that project. And uh, later in this video I will talk a bit about the Arctic Scholarship. Okay, once again, thank you all for the support and for the help. And now on to the last uh, topic of this video. The Arctic Scholarship is, is a scholarship for YouTube creator who makes videos uh, like the bank videos uh, and try to use uh, cameras for proving uh, scientific things. Uh, every year two people will get a free scholarship. All they have to pay for is the trip from their home to Lofoten in Norway. 
All the rest is paid for food, accommodation, workshops and so on. And the committee deciding who gets these scholarships uh, is uh, me, Wolfie6020, uh, Simon Dan, uh, you yours and fight the flat earth. Both globe earthers and flat earthers can uh, apply for this scholarship. You can also join. Channel members and patrons uh, will pay a price that is no profit. I make no profit on it. And others can also join for a bit higher price. Uh, because of the pandemic, I can't have uh, workshops at the moment. So my plan is to have the next one in the beginning of February next year. And more information how to book and so on will come uh, in the end of the summer. Okay, that was all for this time. If you want to know more about this project, uh, look at my web. There you find all information you need about the Arctic Scholarship. Okay, that was all for this time. And once again, thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for helping me uh, to grow bigger. And thank you all thousand who follows the channel. Thank you.